All right, joining me now is A.G., as she calls herself, Allison Gill, host of the Daily Beans uh, podcast. Allison, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. Are you with your mom? Did you see your mom this weekend? I, I heard you had gotten vaccinated on your podcast and you were going to see your mom for the first time um, in a year this weekend, right? Yes, that's right. Yes, I'm actually at my mom's house right now in Arizona, and uh, I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much for having me. But yeah, it's been wonderful to see my mom. It's been over a year. Awesome. So while you're there, check in on that recount for us, will you? Um, <laughs> make sure nothing nefarious is happening. Um, l- let's talk. Let's talk about your your interview with Olivia Troy um, and and kind of the Republicans attempts, it seems, um, to essentially rewrite history. Right. And, and I actually thought it was interesting. At one point, you asked Olivia to grade some of the lawmakers um, like Pauly, um, like McCarthy, like McConnell. Um, how dangerous is it that so many of these Republicans refuse to stand up and say this was wrong and rewrite history the way that um, they see it now versus the way they saw it on that day? Well, that was one of the questions that I had asked Olivia because, you know, she's former Department of Homeland Security senior advisor. And I wanted uh, an expert's opinion on exactly how that uh, sort of, you know, imperils our national security. And, you know, we're going to start looking at a huge push of disinformation from from our adversaries in the coming uh, 10 to 12 months, as as the FBI has put out in a a warning statement, uh, probably based in retaliation, uh, you know, against the sanctions that that President Biden has has put uh, in against Vladimir Putin. But that makes us extremely susceptible uh, to disinformation. And when this the country is so divided as it is, perpetuating that big lie just makes us more divided and puts us more at risk. Um, I want to play another portion of your podcast from Friday talking about um, your sexual assault, your own sexual assault uh, in the military. I am a survivor of military sexual trauma. I am a disabled veteran because of it. And I we pushed so hard to get them to take commanders out of the chain of command. And this is what's not in the story that you might, you know, I, hopefully I can help you understand this is that the reason they want to take commanders out of the chain of command is because commanders have a vested interest in how many rapes and sexual assaults occur in their command. They can get in trouble for having too many sexual assaults in their, you know, uh, in in their command. And so they tend to brush it under the rug. Uh, It's astounding to hear um, you talk about that, the way in which you do, um, Allison, why do you think the effort to reform the way the military handles sexual assault cases has changed so little? I, I think there's a lot of reactionary politics going on here. Uh, I mean, it, it was clearly a problem. You know, we did the I was in the documentary, The Invisible War in 2012. And that's when uh, Kirsten Gillibrand really began her push to get commanders out of the decision making process as to whether or not prosecute to prosecute sexual assault. And, you know, I think it's the reason that it's just been so slow going is because a lot of politicians and commanders were pushing back. They wanted to wait and see if maybe they could, you know, put together some programs that might deter or curb sexual assault. And it just hasn't worked. And I think that now Mm. that we have that empirical evidence of it not working, there's a push now for a sea change to, to, you know, to, to change the tide and to actually take the commanders out of the chain of command. And I, I or I, I, not the chain of command, but, you know, whether or not to prosecute these assaults. And so I think that that's why it was quiet for so long. And now it's been, uh, you know, brought to the forefront again. And, and uh, you know, honestly, you know, Joni Ernst now has joined Kirsten Gillibrand and she's for, former National Guard. She was a commander and a sexual assault survivor. And her daughter has had some issues at West Point as well. And I think that that is actually helping get a more bipartisan, you know, uh, group of people together. And also Lloyd Austin, his first act as our as our um, Secretary of Defense was to assemble that commission to look into this issue. It's been a terrible, ongoing, pervasive issue for so long now. And I'm so glad that it's finally starting to see some steam. All right, Alison Gill, thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, we really do appreciate it.